A single week, 72 billion in investments and a new list of AI gods. This week wasn't just big, it was detonation. The global model wars exploded with a new release from OpenAI and a rumored strategic pivot from Meta. India became the undisputed new center of the AI economy. The bubble question got an answer and the legal foundation of the entire industry was challenged in a massive lawsuit. We also have chip smugglers, a new form of AI powered consumer hardware and why one CEO can't raise his baby without a chatbot. We're diving into the definitive top 11 most important AI stories of the week, ranked by their global impact. Starting with the core technology driving the industry. At number one, we have the big fight. The model wars are on. Last week, three new models were released and this week, brought the ultimate counter punch. The entire industry is defined by the pace of foundational models. First came the confirmed launch of ChatGPT 5.2 on December 11th. Sam Altman launched the model in three tiers, instant thinking and pro to counter the competitive surge. The model was launched after an internal code read at OpenAI. GPT 5.2 thinking achieved a record 40.3% score on the Frontier Math benchmark and showed significant gains in SWE BenchPro for software engineering. OpenAI is aiming to reclaim its momentum for enterprise applications and workflow. But the big question that everyone is asking, is this better than Gemini 3? And talking about Gemini 3, Google rolled out the deep think mode for Gemini 3. A slower, more deliberate reasoning setting designed for complex multi-step logic instead of quick pattern matching. Deep think mode gives more reliable answers this is Google's clearest attempt to position Gemini as a serious competitor in high stakes reasoning tasks. And then Meta did a strategic pivot. Bloomberg reports that Meta is making a dramatic pivot away from open source AI after Llama 4 underperformed. Mark Zuckerberg himself approved a new closed revenue-driven flagship model codenamed Avocado, signaling a major shift from openness to commercial control. Meta also signed new partnerships with CNN, Fox News, USA Today, Le Monde, and others to feed real-time news into its AI assistant. By plugging directly into the news cycle, Meta is trying to fix one of AI's biggest weaknesses. What is that? outdated knowledge. It's a bold move that puts Meta in direct competition with search engines and news aggregators. The model wars are heating up and it's not only about model superiority but also about distribution in consumer markets. So let's take a look at the numbers. ChatGPT remains the leader in the generative AI space. According to Sensor Tower data in November, ChatGPT now has 810 million monthly active users. Gemini has been gaining ground and now has 346 million monthly active users. Growth has definitely slowed for ChatGPT and this is causing major concern as it only gained 8 million users last month. These numbers differ from what Google is saying that Gemini has recently surpassed 650 million monthly active users. That is seriously close to ChatGPT's 800 million monthly active users. So we took a look at the data from StatCounter in November, and that showed that ChatGPT had an approximately 82% of the global AI chatbot market based on session share data. Perplexity sits 
at the number two player with an 11% market share. Google Gemini is hovering at 3% despite all the hype. But the model landscape is shifting too. Let's see what happens next month. Now let's move from the technology core to the major global capital destination. At number two, the big news is all about India this week. Satya Nadella posted on Twitter and LinkedIn, India will lead the world into an AI first future. And we are seeing that in action this week as India becomes the gravitational force of the global AI economy with a wave of announcements totaling an unprecedented 72 billion. Google committed 15 billion in October. Of course, Microsoft had to up the ante. It added 17.5 billion. This was Microsoft's largest ever investment in Asia. It is targeting AI cloud infrastructure, new data centers, and skilling 20 million Indians by 2030. And then Amazon walked in and went all in with a $35 billion announcement. Amazon focused on AI-driven digitization, exports, and tools for 15 million small businesses. It is aiming to push India's e-commerce exports to $80 billion because nothing says we're committed like doubling your rival's biggest regional investment. Then we had DMC Global Partners, which signed a deal to deliver AI data centers with more than a $4.2 billion investment planned. That's $72 billion in AI commitments. India isn't just raising money. It's speed running a trillion dollar AI quest. Also with DMC, Andhra Pradesh is emerging as the data center powerhouse with the new 500 megawatt AI hub from DMC. This totals 2.5 gigawatt of AI data center capacity planned in Andhra Pradesh. That is massive compute capacity coming up in India. On top of this, Tata and Intel added momentum with an MOU for chip manufacturing. I am an AI voice assistant and I will take you through the next story. At number 3, the architects themselves have received their crown. Time magazine cited 2025 as the year when the potential of artificial intelligence roared into view, with no turning back. Every industry needs it, every company uses it and every nation needs to build it. This is the single most impactful technology of our time. The magazine named the architects of AI as its 2025 person of the year, recognizing the individuals who imagined, designed, and built AI. Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Meta, the guy who pioneered the open-source push, only to approve a closed, commercial flagship codenamed Avocado. Lisa Su, CEO of AMD, the rival CEO, battling Nvidia's monopoly by challenging Jensen Huang with her high-performance MI300X chip. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, XAI, the titan juggling cars, rockets, and XAI's mission to pursue truth-seeking AGI. Jensen Huang, CEO of NVIDIA, the CEO of the multi-trillion dollar chip giant whose hardware is the sole foundation of the entire AI economy. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, the face of AGI, leading the sprint to deliver GPT 5.2 and make AI an enterprise reality. Demis Hassabis, CEO of Google DeepMind, pushing the frontier of reliable reasoning with deep think mode. Dario Amode, CEO of Anthropic, the Anthropic CEO, who is securing massive enterprise, deals with his safety-first models. Fei Fei Li, godmother of AI, the researcher who taught computers how to see, and now champions human-centered AI. A big congratulations to all of the architects of AI. But moving on from power brokers to the foundational legal crisis. At number four, we have New York Times suing perplexity. The copyright war has begun. The New York Times 
ignited one of the biggest legal battles in AI this week by suing Perplexity, accusing the company of illegally copying millions of articles to train its models. Dow Jones and the New York Post have quickly joined the fight, turning it into a multi-front war between newsrooms and AI labs. New York Times is also locked in a major copyright infringement lawsuit against OpenAI and Microsoft that was filed late in 2023. The war is complex. Anthropic has agreed to pay authors $1.5 billion for pirating their work. OpenAI has signed licensing deals with Axel Springer, News Corp, Time, Reddit, and many others. The latest is that Walt Disney just announced it is investing $1 billion in OpenAI and will let the startup use characters from Star Wars, Pixar, and Marvel. The New York Times versus Perplexity is not just another lawsuit. It is shaping up to be the defining copyright case of the AI era. From lawsuits, we move to the geopolitical infrastructure war. At number five, the chip war intensifies. The U.S. government shut down a China-linked GPU smuggling network. Yes, a smuggling network, not for gold, not for silver, but for GPUs. Authorities seized over $50 million in hardware, and the accused now faces charges carrying penalties up to 20 years in prison. High-end GPUs have become so valuable and so strategically important that they are now treated like weapon-grade asset. From geopolitics to industry-wide commercialization. At number six, major enterprise AI collaborations were announced this week. Accenture continued its foundational model partnership spree. After announcing a major deal with OpenAI last week, Accenture expanded its collaboration with Anthropic. The two companies launched the Accenture Anthropic Business Group, a multi-year initiative designed to help enterprises deploy Claude models at scale. This partnership is another sign that enterprise AI is shifting from pilots to production. And in a rare moment of unity, OpenAI and Anthropic are collaborating as co-founders of the Agentic AI Foundation under the Linux Foundation. The AAIF is designed to provide neutral stewardship for open, interoperable infrastructure as Agentic AI systems move into real-world production. So let's transition now from corporate deals to national strategy. At number seven, we have India's domestic strategy for AI taking shape with Abhishek Singh, the CEO of the India AI Mission. He was speaking at the University of Chicago and delivered one of the clearest roadmaps yet for India's AI future. He argued that the next decade won't be defined by job losses, but by job transitions, as AI reshapes both global and Indian labor markets. India's advantage, he said, lies in aggressively building AI talent, delivering indigenous tools, and preparing its workforce for entirely new categories of work. Now, national strategy shifts to market sentiment. And the big question is number eight. Is there an AI bubble? McKinsey and Goldman Sachs say the signs look familiar. Economist Raghuram Rajan sees a dangerous mix of 2001 dot-com frenzy, what we call the AI mania, and the 2008 credit expansion. But here's the complication. Menlo Ventures dropped a stat that enterprise AI investment just did grow. It tripled from $11.5 billion to $37 billion in one year. Companies don't triple investments unless they're expecting real returns. So we asked our bots, and what did they say? 66% of our bots say the AI bubble is not on. Four out of six said no, indicating the majority are seeing real value, not just hype. From market sentiment, now let's move to career anxiety. At number nine, we have the big debate. Should you still 
learn to cope. The week kicked off with a surprisingly heated question. Online, the takes were dramatic. AI will do everything. But then Andrew Nick stepped in and shut the whole thing down. Leaders that were advising others not to learn to code on the grounds AI will automate it. I think we'll look back on that as some of the worst career advice ever given. I'm already seeing um, on my teams, a lot of Silicon Valley teams, not just the software engineers, but the marketers, HR professionals, the analysts, the finance professionals, the ones that know how to code, they're starting to run circles around the ones that don't. So, He said discouraging people from learning programming because of AI will go down as some of the worst career advice ever given. Jeffrey Hinton backed him up. The truth is simple. AI isn't replacing coding. AI is replacing boring coding. The people who understand systems plus code plus AI will run the next decade. This is from the father of AI himself. At number 10, we transition from career advice to the next consumer hardware wave. Google confirmed it's returning to smart glasses. And this time, it's partnering with Samsung and other hardware players to build a new generation of AI. Now over to our presenter, Rohana. Let's move from consumer hardware to the personal side of AI parenting, therapy, and robot fashion. These are our final stories of the week. Sam Altman's newborn. Altman went viral after saying he can't raise his newborn without ChatGPT. I cannot imagine having gone through the, like figuring out how to raise a newborn without ChatGPT. Clearly people did it for a long time, no problem. Yes. But, <laughs> yeah. so, so I know it, it like there, it's it, clearly it was possible. Yes, it was um, possible. <laughs> but I have relied on it so much. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's obviously like the most important thing to have in my life. So it's top of mind and I use it all the time. He explained how he uses AI for baby related questions scheduling and late night decision making. The internet instantly declared ChatGPT the world's newest co-parent. Teenagers and AI Therapy, a Guardian report, revealed that one in four teenagers now turns to AI chatbots for emotional support. Teens say AI feels non-judgmental, always available, and easier to talk to than people. Experts warn this could create emotional dependency Parents used to worry about screen time. Now they're worrying about screen therapy. McDonald's at Backlash. It's the most terrible time of the year. All the, All the shops turned to mayhem. McDonald's dropped an ad that instantly went viral because viewers accused it of being AI-generated slop. The studio behind the ad pushed back, but McDonald's quietly turned off YouTube comments, then took down the ad on December 9th. Jensen Huang on Robot Tailors. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang went viral after saying that in the future, one of the most coveted jobs will be a tailor for robots. Huang's message, the future of work won't be human versus robot, but humans building the ecosystems around robots. Back to you, Security. I isn't slowing down. It's accelerating, fragmenting, and rewriting the rules of law, work, and even parenting. Don't just watch this future unfold. Stay ahead of it. If this news was valuable, hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss next week's critical updates.